there are two types of people in the military, those who move themselves and those who do not. It's a decision the military community faces every PCS season. To Diddy or not, that is the question. The choice to make money on a personally procured move or PPM is a little easier now that the Department of Defense has made a permanent change to the amount of money you can make on your next move. Thank you for watching. I am Lacey Langford, a financial coach, veteran, and mill spouse. Basically, military and money is my jam. If you wanna learn more about military life, money, and entrepreneurship, be sure to subscribe and to give this video a thumbs up. So what is a personally procured move or PPM or a Diddy move. A personally procured move was formerly known as a do-it-yourself move or a Diddy move. It's the Department of Defense's program to pay service members to move their household goods from one duty location to another. They're both referring to the same DOD moving option where you pay the upfront cost to move your household goods to your next duty location and then you're reimbursed by the government. So they're the same thing, just a new name and acronym to know. If you say Diddy, people will know what you're talking about, but in case there's an actual test, know that the new term is PPM and that when the government pays a moving company to move you, it's known as a household goods move or an HHG. So the terminology when it comes to moving in the military is important. When it comes to moving yourself, you also need to know what a partial PPM is. So many acronyms. A partial PPM is a combination of an HHG move and a PPM. I know, it's crazy. Partial PPMs are when a moving company takes most of your household goods for you and then you take some and move them from your old duty location to your new one by yourself. Not everybody wants to do a full PPM, so a partial PPM is a great way to still earn extra cash without the level of work involved doing a whole move on your own with a PPM. We always did a partial ditty when we PCS. We had a list of items we always took because you never know what will happen once you arrive at your new duty location. Your household goods could be delayed or your housing could be longer to secure than you anticipated, which happens more than, more than we would like. We moved some of our clothing, essential kitchen items we always wanted to have, and valuables to our next duty location. If you have small children, you're already planning to pack toys, probably a pack and play, strollers, and anything you need to keep your kids from screaming during the entire move are basically things you're gonna take anyway. Even though it's not a full move, you're still taking a large amount of your stuff and getting it to the next place. So make sure that that weight gets counted for doing a partial PPM and that you get paid for it. So why would you do a Diddy or a PPM? The quick answer is you can make money and do it your way. In the second half of 2020, as a response to COVID, the DOD temporarily updated its policy to up the amount of PPM payment incentive that people get. So now they're paying 100% of the estimated cost the government would pay a moving company to move your stuff. That was temporary. Now at the beginning of 2021, it's been made permanent. Before the amendment, the DOD's policy was only paying 95% of the estimated cost. So now that's an extra 5% that can go in your pocket. When you do a PPM, if you spend less than the government's estimated cost of the move, you get to keep all that difference. For example, if you PS, excuse me, if you PCS and the estimated cost is $10,000 and you elect for a PPM but only spend $7,000 to move, you get to keep that $3,000 difference. So you can make a good chunk of change on a move if you keep your expenses low. Money, money is one of the perks of a PPM, but also the ability to do it your way. If you've got one PCS under your belt, you know higher packers and movers don't always give your household items the same level of TLC that you would. Like the time our packers dumped all of our neatly organized nuts and bolts into a large box, and then they threw some razor blades on top of it to make the unpacking experience more exciting for us. 
or the time they threw a toilet brush on top of our kitchen plates, or the time they dropped our digital safe on a concrete step. So you get it, my list could go on and on. Some of us aren't crazy about strangers handling our delicates and the things that are sentimental to us. Because of that, many prefer to pack and move their own stuff to take care of it their way. So how do you complete a PPM? A PCS usually starts with a set of orders to move. Sometimes you have noticed, sometimes you don't. Once you have the orders and know when and where you're going, it's time to plan out your PPM. Here are some of the steps that you're gonna take if you wanna do one on your next PCS. First, decide on a full or partial PPM. You have the choice to do the full shebang where you're moving it all yourself or you could take some of your things just as needed. It's best to decide first if you're up for doing the entire move by yourself before you even start. You don't wanna to commit to a huge project if you're not gonna follow through with it. Next, you wanna look at your budget. Your budget is a major factor in deciding to do a full or a partial PPM because you have to pay for all of your moving expenses up front with the PPM. You don't want the cost of the PPM to impact your ability to pay your bills. So make sure you have a game plan for how you'll pay for the moving expenses. In some cases, you might be eligible to receive pay advance for your moving costs. If you do decide to take an advance, remember, you'll be paying that money back later. It's not just free money. The next thing is talk to a transportation expert. Winging your PPM or making decisions based off of what you heard other people do is the worst way to do your move on your own. Talk to your installation transportation office to get the facts about PPMs and what you're qualified for before you start making plans and spending money. There are classes on it, they have all of the time, so make sure you get the information right the first time. The next step is to get approved. You need approval to do a PPM, so be sure to get it before you do anything. It would be a shame to complete a move and not get reimbursed for it, and most of us in the military have met at least one person that's made that mistake. The next step is to create your PPM file. You need to have a hub of information for all of your PPM and a folder or a travel file box is a great place for you to keep all of your, your, your approval, your receipts, your wait tickets, and any other important information about your move. You'll need your receipts and wait tickets to submit your PPM claim, so do not lose them. The DOD does not care if you lose your receipts. If you don't have a receipt, it didn't happen. So keep your folder in a place you'll remember it during your PCA, PCS. Do not let it get buried in all of the stuff. The next step is to weigh and move. Once you have approval and your plan, it's time to make the move. You have to weigh your vehicle empty and full and provide those weight receipts on your claim to get paid. So don't skip the wait station. I can't stress this enough. You're gonna wanna hang on to those wait tickets and information. Once you're weighed empty and full, it is time for a road trip to your new duty location. The next step and final step is you're gonna submit your claim once you arrive. When it's all said and done, you submit all the required information to claim reimbursement for your PPM. You'll have 45 days after you move to file your reimbursement. So how do you make money on a PPM? Before you fully commit to doing a full PPM move, you need to do a little bit of research. Homework never ever hurts. First, you want to estimate how much you'll potentially make off of your move. You can do that by using a PPM estimator. I'll put links in the description below with an estimator so you can check out the cost. How much you get paid for your move depends on rank, the number of dependents you have, household, good weight, move date, and the distance you're gonna travel. So it really just depends on your situation. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you estimate those things. An example estimation would be an E6 making $9,927 to $9,647 based on going from Fort Bragg to Fort Irwin with dependents and 11,000 pounds of household goods. 
this estimated amount is not all profit. Remember that the estimated total is what you'd receive to complete the entire move yourself. You need to deduct the expenses you estimate on your move to see if you would even make a profit on that move. There's an incentive to keep your costs as low as possible with a do-it-yourself move. When your costs are lower, there's a greater potential for profit. In the description, I'm gonna include links to a list of DFAST authorized expenses for you to check out and do your homework. Once you get estimates for your household goods, the most significant expense, you can determine if you could do it cheaper and better your way than having the military move you instead. So you're gonna to have to weigh the two. You've got to figure out if the juice is worth the squeeze. Are all the costs and work and coordination worth the amount of money you'll receive from the Department of Defense for the move? Really think about that because you are gonna be putting in the work doing a do-it-yourself move. That's why do-it-yourself is in there. Some things to know and remember about PPMs. PPM money is taxable. Yes, the money you make off of the PPM is taxable income. The difference between the government's estimated moving cost and the expenses you incurred to move, the profit, is taxable. So don't let that come and bite you in the butt later after you're all done with the move and going to file your taxes. It could take a minute to get paid. If you've been in the military any length of time, you are familiar with the saying, hurry up and wait. Most would agree that that statement is probably gonna to apply to receive your payment as well. There's no cut and dry answer for this. It could be days, weeks, or it could take months. So plan accordingly. Don't allow your credit score to drop because you can't afford to make payment on your credit card that you charge all of your PCS expenses on make sure that you have enough money to pay those bills on time. Remember, the government travel credit card gives you a narrow window to pay it off. Even if DFAS hasn't yet paid you for your move, you're still responsible. Being late on your GTCC payment can cause a lot of problems for you and your career. So again, plan accordingly. Another thing to remember is don't spend more than you plan. Be, be aware of your estimated costs. If the amount you spend on a PPM is more than the amount the government estimated for the move, you will not be in reimbursed for that excess spending. That will come out of your pocket, so make sure that you're gonna remember that. All right, let's wrap it up. PCSing is stressful. No matter how hard you try to be organized and be prepared, it's just the military world's way. Whether you do a HHG or a PPM, there will be factors out of your control and it's gonna happen every time you PCS. But with a PPM, there's an upside. If you keep your costs low, you can make money. And with the extra cash, you'll have the opportunity to get yourself set up for success by paying off debt, investing in your thrift savings plan, or saving for emergencies. Plus, when you do it yourself move, you get to do it your way and take care of your household goods the way you want them treated. If you wanna learn more about doing a personally procured move on your next PCS, you can get the link to my full article on PPMs in the description below. You can also get the links to find and follow me on social media in the description. Be sure to click on the alarm bell to get notified when my next videos come out. I'm Lacey Langford. Thank you for watching, subscribing, and for the thumbs up. I will see you in the next video.